Good morning. Sorry, we're just a few seconds late here. Uh, we're here to share with you our message for today, and I'm going to go back and pick up a little bit where we left off last week. Last week we did sort of a preface to the teaching. Uh, I really am not impressed to teach anything much different than what I have been teaching about the church and about you as a believer, a child of God. We've been talking about prayer and the supernatural, and we're going to get back to that today. But in recent uh, weeks, we've had some folks question us a little bit about, you know, where are we in relation to the end time events that are outlined in the book of Daniel, the book of Revelation, and and uh, will the church be going through the Great Tribulation? I don't believe the church will be going through the Great Tribulation. The Great Tribulation actually speaks of Jacob's trouble or the wrath of God being poured out upon the earth and upon the ungodly, not the church. Jesus, we're his body, and his body's already been judged once for sin, and and uh, all we face is, is uh, judgment for our deeds after the flesh at the white throne. But anyway, um, uh, I'm trying to share too much here. I'm trying to uh, get a little bit too far ahead. Uh, but we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, what we as believers need to focus on, okay? Uh, over in, in uh, Romans chapter 8, it speaks of, Romans chapter 10, verse 8, rather. It tells us the word is nigh thee. Uh, well, it says, what saith that the word is nigh thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart? That is the word of faith which we preach. And I was relating last week about how uh, the teaching of the word of faith has seemed kind of extreme. And as with any teaching, there's always going to be some abuse by people taking certain truths to an extreme. Dad Hagen used to warn us. He said, you know, there's a ditch on either side of the road, and the, the key to staying balanced is remaining in the center. It's not getting off one side or the other. For example, concerning the Holy Ghost, there are people that utterly reject any teaching about the Holy Spirit and about tongues, and then there are people that their sole focus is praying in tongues, and, and uh, uh, you know they, they leave no or make no allowance for praying with their understanding. So you know they're off on the other side of that road, and they're in a rut. And the same can be true with any subject on the you know uh, presented in the Word of God. I apologize. I'm trying to talk fast, and and I just wasn't built for talking fast. I'll just do my best. Let's pray, Father. I just thank you for your wisdom today, your grace today. I thank you, Father, for helping me to to speak your heart, Lord. I know that people are troubled and some are restless, but I know that you've given us peace, Lord Jesus, and you warned us, don't let any man take it from us. So, Father, we're going to focus on you today. We're going to focus on your word today, and we just thank you for the Holy Spirit helping us to have ears to hear, eyes to see, Father, that we could remain focused upon your goodness, your mercy, and your gracious provision, all that we are afforded by the blood of Christ Jesus. In Jesus' precious and holy name, Father, we thank you. And uh, so anyway, we're referring back to the Word of Faith. I believe the Word of Faith teaching uh, set forth in God's Word is essential to folks having uh, peace today and, and having the assurance and, and uh, the joy of their salvation in this present life. God doesn't want you living a tormented life. Glory to God, and so he's made a provision for us. God's word, in fact, is designed and has the purpose of promoting faith, not fear. Uh, it, it, it disturbs me, but I know that there are a lot of people that teach from the book of Revelation. Their whole emphasis is trying to scare the mm out of people. <laughs> you know what? Fear is a real poor motivator. It's only temporary at best. And just to give you some idea of that, look at how the churches were were after the 9-11 uh, uh, situation. You, you couldn't find a seat in most churches, but just weeks later, uh, there were all the seats you could want or desire. You could, you could take a convention to most churches because they were so empty just within a matter of a couple of months. What happened? That, that fear diminished. People became a little bit more secure, and, and uh, they weren't nearly as dependent upon God or their faith in Him, and they were ready to wing it again. So anyway, <laughs> you know, it's important that we understand that God is not in the business of promoting fear among his children. Right. <clears throat> really, fear is the result of either not having a covenant or not understanding what we have by covenant today. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm not saying if you've got fear, you're not a believer. I'm saying maybe you just don't really know what's yours or how to lay hold of all that belongs to you as a child of God and because of the blood of Christ Jesus. And that's really what I've been endeavoring to teach probably for the vast majority of the ministry the Lord's called me to. Uh, and and I'm, I'm praying that in light of present circumstances, the message of the word of faith is a little bit more relevant to you. It's not just about getting a Cadillac and living in a mansion. In fact, I don't believe it's about that at all. I, I, I don't believe God's against you prospering and being blessed, but he doesn't want the blessings to get in, in the way of his call on your life or your obedience to that call. And, and so anyway, he, he tells us over there very quick, you know, very clearly in verse 8 of Romans 10 that this Bible that we preach, it's called the Word of Faith, which we preach. And then he goes on to talk about how that faith operates in relation to salvation. And verse 9 says that, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So we name it and claim it to get born again. We claim Jesus as our Lord and Savior, risen from the dead. And that's how we get born again. Amen? Uh, Well, having said that, let's go ahead and skip ahead a little bit here. Most folks uh, have balked at this message, the Word of Faith message, because uh, it just hasn't seemed all that important. But it's becoming more apparent in its importance with each day that passes. You know, with this current pandemic, And listen, I'm not sure how convinced I am about the severity of it. Uh, I'm not going to bicker one way or the other. If you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. If you don't want to wear a mask, I'm not going to condemn you. I'm not going to judge you. I just read an article this morning that said that the Center for Disease Control estimates that in reality, only about half of those that have been reported to have died of, of COVID actually died of COVID if that many. In other words, the numbers are saying one figure, but Center for Disease Control that should know and would know says it's less than half that many people that are being reported. So this whole thing's been blown out of proportion and exaggerated at best, and uh, I don't believe we need to be near as worked up over it as what people have. There are more people that die by the flu. There are more babies being destroyed through abortion every day than uh, you know what we're seeing people lose their lives to this disease uh, do I want to see anybody lose their life to it? No, certainly not but I again don't want to see the devil use this as a tool to manipulate uh, our government or our nation into a, a big economic hole either so having said all that uh, you know it's important that we understand that God knew these days were coming He wasn't caught off guard. He doesn't want you caught off guard, and he's warned us before about such things. Uh, And and I believe that we can have peace in the middle of the storms of life if we'll focus on Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. So times are changing. There's, uh, you know, things like this happening, this pandemic. Listen, it's only going to get worse in my estimation. It's not going to get better. And so if we're going to depend on the world and focus on the world, we're going to have some difficulties. But if we'll learn to focus on Jesus and depend on the Father, we'll, we'll be all right. We're going to make it. Amen. Uh, if you'll be ready for anything, you'll be prepared for anything. If you'll be prepared for anything, you'll be ready for everything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Amen. Uh, what's going to happen in these last days? Well, I believe that the devil is grooming uh, this world for a greater dependence upon the world system that he manipulates and controls. Over in Revelation 13, it talks about uh, the beast. And, and actually in verse 11, it says, I beheld another beast. Uh, Revelation 13, 11. I don't know if I gave you that reference. I'm trying to share these things quickly because I want to get on to something else. But it's important that I share what I am right now as well. So it says, I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon, and he exercised all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. So that's where we've got to be guarded against looking for the spectacular and ignoring or overlooking the the supernatural. God moves supernaturally in our hearts to 
lead us and direct us by a still small voice, by the, the witness of the Holy Spirit. But the devil's going to do some things that are rather flamboyant in the last days to get people's attention and make folks think that he's somebody to behold. It says in verse 14, It deceiveth them that dwelleth on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by the sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, and that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy, sell, buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So, you know, what about this? You know, the, the truth is, is, if you're dependent on this world, then then you're basically going to be uh, ruled by this world. Right. Amen? Yeah. But if you'll learn to depend on God, you don't have to worry about being ruled by the world. What about the, the great tribulation? You know, it, in Matthew 24, it talks about the tribulation. In, ba- in fact, let me just go ahead and read this. It is coming. Matthew 24, and verse 15. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let him, or let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let them, or him which is on the housetop, not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation. There's a great tribulation coming. I don't believe that as God's children we're going to be part of that. In fact, in in a few weeks here, I'm probably going to teach on end times again. I'll probably teach a little bit from the book of Revelation and from Daniel. Uh, We're just not there yet. I I believe it's more important to learn how to live where we're at (laughs) than it is to, to dwell on or look or focus on tomorrow. Jesus said, Take no thought for tomorrow sufficient unto the days of evil thereof. We need to learn how to live where we're at today. Amen. And then tomorrow, I believe, will take care of itself. Think about Noah. You know, Noah, they estimate that it took him anywhere from 100 to 120 years to build the ark. Now, he didn't, you know, God didn't say, Noah, a flood's coming tomorrow. I'm going to just manifest a, a big boat for you to load up and get on and you'll be safe. But every day for 120 or 100 years, at least 100 years, he he got up and he went out there and he worked on the building of that ark. That was faith at work every day. He could have slept in. I don't, you know, maybe he did. Maybe he had to do some repenting. I have no idea. But, but, uh, you know, he worked with God. It was his faith that caused him to get up and and drive each nail to cut each timber uh, to to position and fasten each timber in place that was faith at work and uh, you know the the there's so many people today that they're they're waiting on some event Noah didn't wait for the flood to come to start getting ready he started using his faith where he was what are you doing to use your faith where you're at right now that's what's really important today are are you believing god for provision today well i don't really have to pastor because i get a good paycheck there's a lot of people not getting their paycheck right now but you know what god isn't out of business david said i i've been young and now i'm old but i've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging for bread glory to god you can depend on god and it's it's really important that whether you feel like you need to or not I guarantee you there were days that Noah got up and it was sunny and it was clear and, and it hadn't rained in months and and he probably thought well I don't really need a boat you know what why is that important the only reason he continued to work on the construction of that ark is God told him to yeah. Yeah. And, and the Word of God tells us that the just shall live by faith not because they they have to, uh, but they need to. 
Circumstance will sometimes tell us what we have to do, but God's word will tell us just what we need to do. And it's important to understand the difference between the two. You need to find areas in your life where you're at right now that you can obey God. Yes. When you think about it, the things that Noah did in preparation for that 100 years to 120 years, those were the things, that exercise of, uh, exercise of his faith is what uh, fortified him against that challenge of the flood that was yet to come and that the, by all rights seemed impossible, but with God all things are possible. Right. Amen. Yes. Glory to God. And think about it a minute. There's a little bit of type in that, a type in that because uh, why, why did the flood come? It was God's wrath poured forth on the ungodly, but God's, God's man was spared, wasn't he? And the ark is a type of Jesus. We that are believers are in Christ Jesus. We're in God's ark of safety regardless of what's poured out on this world. So Jesus warned them over there in, in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 21. He said that there's coming. He said there, there shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor, shall, nor ever shall be. <clears throat> and he goes on to clarify. He says, except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Well, Jesus had something to say about tribulation as well over in John chapter 16. He said in verse 32, he's talking to his disciples. He said, Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. He was talking about his own abandonment by his own disciples as he was offered on the sacri you know, sacrificed on the altar of the cross, I should say. <clears throat> he said, said, you know, when they sacrifice me, when they crucify me, you're going to be scattered. I'll be left alone. And yet he said, yet I'm not alone because the Father is with me. Well, eventually even the Father had to turn from him. Because on the cross, Jesus cried out. He said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why did Jesus suffer all these things? He did so in our stead so we would never be abandoned by God. God said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Amen. And so for God to abandon his church and leave it subject to the great tribulation would be an abandonment. It would be a forsaking. He's not going to do that. I want to assure you that. We don't have time to go into much in-depth teaching on it, but I just want you to know God loves you. He, he doesn't resent you. He's not out to, to punish you. He's giving us every option and opportunity to avoid grief in life if we'll just learn to trust him on a daily basis. Amen. Right. Whether it seems like you need to or not. Be like Noah. Just be consistent. Just keep building your house by obedience to God's word. It's not yes. good enough just to hear it. Find ways to act upon it. Remember the storm's coming on the godly and the ungodly. And it doesn't matter how much you hear of God's word. What matters is what you do in light of what you're hearing. Yes. Amen. Glory to God. So... He said down here that uh, they'll be scattered, each to his own, leave me alone. And yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. Now listen to verse 33. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. <laughs> not torment, but peace, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. Did you catch that? Who's he talking to here? He's talking to his disciples, and, and I believe he's talking to us as believers today. He said, in the world you shall have tribulation, but he doesn't stop there. He says, but be of good cheer. <laughs> Amen. Don't be of good cheer because you have tribulation, but be of good cheer. He said, I have overcome the world. In other words, it doesn't matter what kind of tribulation the world may cook up. If you'll learn to walk by faith in your redemption, you'll find you're immune to it. Mm. Glory to God. Amen. There were times that, that the church, the religious people, right after Jesus' first message, first sermon, they took him out and were going to cast him off a cliff. Yeah. And Jesus walked through the midst of them and they were none the wiser. Yeah. Yeah. They, they couldn't kill him. Nobody could take his life from him. He, he had to lay down his life that it might be taken. Amen. So deliverance for believers. I want you to get, get this 
settled in your thinking. Deliverance for believers does not come through a future event, but it comes through the present exercise of your faith in the redemption of Christ Jesus. Amen? In other words, our deliverance depends on us learning to walk in what's already been wrought by the blood of Jesus. Glory to God. Listen to this. First John, remember Jesus. Let me, let me quote that again. Verse 33 back there. He said, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Now looking down to First John chapter 5, it tells us in verse 1, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is Christ is born of God, and every one that loveth him that begot him loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. You know that world that... that has tribulation <laughs> listen as much as you depend on the world the world will be your master uh -huh. that's, true. that's why that's why we see the progressive pursuit by the government that's in place today of entitlement programs yeah. they're they're creating within society a, a, a sense of being owed or entitlement but see, the devil never gives you something for nothing. He, he was always seeking to offer people an alternative. He, back in the Garden of Eden, he sought to give Adam and Eve an alternative to God's will that would be easy, so to speak. Yeah. When, he, when he was in the temptation of the wilderness, tempting Jesus, he was offering him alternatives. He, he was telling him, oh, you don't, you don't have to go to the cross. You, all you got to do is bow to me. But what would have been the result? Wow. He would have had to depend on the devil for anything and everything if he depended on him for anything. Right. And listen, the Bible tells us that Satan is the God, little g, the God of this world. Adam turned over the reins of this world to him back when he fell. And the devil uses that as a means to manipulate people into unbelief and defeat don't let him do that with you learn how you can depend on god rather than having to depend on the world mm -hmm. now listen if you're in a place where you're having to depend to a certain degree on some government program i'm not going to condemn you i'm just going to tell you it'd be in your own best interest to learn how to transfer your dependence upon the government to a dependence upon jesus and you can do that if you'll learn how to believe god if yes. you'll if yes. you'll pursue some teaching on the subject of the word of faith and listen i encourage you there are good people out there teaching god's word yes. amen I, I love dad hagan i believe he was one of the most balanced in fact he called into question and challenged a lot of the extreme practices that we're seeing rampant among some of the supposed leaders in the word of faith move, movement today if you want to find some real leaders in the Word of Faith movement, find people that sat under Dad Hagen. Find a good Rama church for somebody that's in good standing with Rama. Uh, you know, they've got a handle on some things. I'm not saying they're perfect. Wow. I believe there are things that, that as a Rama student and a Rama graduate, there are things that I have learned and will continue to learn from other folks. We love yes. Church of the Highlands and Chris Hodges. That's he's right. got a heart to reach this world, that's and right. he's making some progress. Amen. Yes. Uh, uh, making upwards of uh, <laughs> just in the United States and their their local campuses in the state of Alabama, they had somewhere in excess, I believe it was twenty seven thousand people confess Jesus last year and get born again. Well, there's something I can learn from somebody that's that effective in reaching people with the good news of the gospel. Amen. Yes. But you know what? I'm not going to throw away what I got from Ramo. I know full well that that I've got family members. I know myself. I would not be alive today were it not for what I've been taught from Dad Hagen uh, of the Word of Faith. And so I really encourage you, uh, you know, if the devil's tried to create some animosity between you and that message or those who teach it, you might need to go back and examine that. I've often found this, that the, the relationships that are the most challenging often have promise of the greatest reward. And there's some people, I listen, there's some people in the Word of Faith movement, I don't really like some of the things they do, but that doesn't mean I haven't learned something from them either. 
And, and so I encourage you, I encourage you to, to look to God's word for yourself. I remember uh, back early on, there were a lot of younger ministers that were more flamboyant and more flashy than Dad Hagen. They didn't talk like they were from the back streets of Texas or something. <laughs> you know, they knew that a tire was a tire and not tar. <laughs> Amen. And that Pharaoh was Pharaoh, not Pharaoh. Uh, but you know what? Dad Hagen had lived it. And, and I, I loved him because anytime he would share anything with you, <coughs> he would always preface it and, and build upon a foundation of God's word. He said in every mouth, you know, let let every word be established in the mouth of two or more witnesses. And he'd usually give you at least two witnesses to any principle or, or, or instruction he gave you from God's word. Amen. At least two, often more. And so I respected that in him. He, he'd always tell you, open your Bible. Yeah. Just open your Bible. Amen. <laughs> Read your Bible for yourself. You'll be amazed at what you see and how apparent things become as you trust God to reveal his word to you. So anyway, it says down there in 1 John 5, 4, whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Now, I, I believe rather than saying whosoever, he said whatsoever, because that's that spiritual being you are. Yes. Not, not the flesh. Yeah. <laughs> you know, man is a spirit. He has a soul. He lives in a body. The spirit is a real man. It's the part of us that's connected to God. Amen. Yeah. One with Jesus. Glory to Jesus. And, and and we have a soul. That's our mind, our will, and our emotions. And, and then we have a body that we live in. That's our tabernacle, so to speak, that's spoken of over in Second Corinthians chapter uh, 5. Well, anyway, uh, it, it's your spirit, man, that overcomes. It's not your flesh. It's not your emotions. It's not your physical body. Would to God we could just see the devil manifest and give him a good punch in the nose, but that's not how it works. You deal with the devil by resisting him steadfast in the faith. But you know what? That does him more harm and causes him far more pain than if you could punch him in the nose. Uh, so anyway, whatsoever is born of God overcome the world, this is a victory that overcomes the world. Guess what? Even our faith. Our faith in what? Our faith in the victory that Jesus accomplished in our behalf. Listen to verse 5 again, just a reaffirmation. It says, Who is he that overcometh the world? And it's tribulation, we could say. But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Yeah. Glory to God. Understand this, when we talk about faith and we talk about obedience to the Word of God, obedience is a result of faith in and love for the Lord God in recognition of all that Jesus is, was, and ever will be. It, it's not the result of some kind of torment or fear. It's not thinking if I don't do this. Right. No, it's just that assurance of heart that draws us to the Father. But yet, when we think about teaching on the last days, what do most believers focus upon and fear in these last days? Tribulation of the beast. Yeah. What you fear will master you. That's right. That's what right. you fear will master you. That's why you need to love God yeah. and, and, and resist fear. Amen. Yes. <clears throat> Glory to God. Well, think about it. The mark of the beast is irrelevant if you're not dependent on the world. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yes. It's irrelevant. Yeah. If you're not dependent on the world anyway, and you don't have to depend on the world. Listen to this. I'm going to... Uh, 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 mm, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 24, Jesus was speaking over here. He said, No man can serve two masters. For either he'll hate the one, love the other, or else he'll hold to the one, despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. In other words, if you fixate on, on what you have or what you don't have instead of God who provides abundantly, then, then your fears and your worries are going to... Remember Job? He said, that which I have greatly feared has come upon me. Yeah. Fear drew calamity upon him. Now, the devil was at the root of all that, but it was Job's fears that opened the door. Yes. That's why we've got to come back to God's Word and let it build faith in us, yes. not yes. fear. Amen? Glory to God. To whoever you look for provision, you will elect to be your master by doing that. In other words, if you, if you look to this world to provide, if you think the government owes you, guess what? The government's going to collect on that one day. They're going to give you a mark and say, you can't do any business unless you receive this mark. 
So anyway, Jesus in verse 25 continues these thoughts. He said, Take no thought for your life what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? <clears throat> so he's talking about the subject of your sustenance, your shelter, your clothing, uh, your physical needs being met, isn't he? And, and what's he saying? He's saying don't worry about these things. Just focus upon your faith in the Father. Yeah. And look on down, if you would, in verse 26. He gives us this assurance. He says, Behold, the fowls of the air, they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Yes. Which of you? You know, Jesus didn't die for the... <laughs> he died for you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Amen. He's, re he's redeemed us, and he's redeemed the creation that we'll one day live in, but, but uh, his love, you're, you're the one he loves, and you're the one that his blood was shed to redeem, amen? So he said, Behold, the fowls are there. They say not, neither do they eat nor gather in barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? <coughs> in other words, he's saying, How can worry further your cause? It won't do it. Why take you thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the, glass, the, the, glass, the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast in the oven, shall he not much more clothe ye, O ye of little faith? Therefore, listen to verse 31. Therefore, take no thought saying. What's he saying? Don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about what you're going to drink. Don't worry with what clothes you're going to wear. For all these things do the Gentiles seek. Now, why did he make this reference to the Gentiles? Because that was representative of the ungodly and unbelievers. He said the world, the, the lost and the ungodly, they are focused upon their next meal. They're focused upon what they're going to wear today or wear tomorrow. And, and it's not that you shouldn't be clothed. Amen. You need clothes. <laughs> yeah. But you don't need to lose sleep over what you have or you don't have. You need to trust God for what you need. Yes. And that's what faith is about. Yes. Amen. So he said, after all these things to the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. So he's affirming the Father's faithfulness. Amen. And he goes on to tell us. I'm going to... Uh, uh, share this with you very quickly verse 33 but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness what's he saying stay focused on Jesus and your walk with him and all these things shall be added unto you in other words instead of you going after them they'll just come to you and I know that we've seen that in our own lives there have been times that we had a family that the Lord touched our heart to I remember one in particular who said I want you to, they're in a bad place they they're about to lose everything, and, and you need to buy them some groceries and go assure them of my love for them, my commitment to them. And, and the only grocery money we had to buy groceries was our grocery money. Yeah, yeah. But, but we were so impressed of the Lord, and Robin and I were in agreement about it, that we went out and we bought groceries for this family. Yeah. Uh, they were staying in a motel room. I can't remember if we helped with a motel room even, but uh, I, I don't guess we did. But anyway... Uh, we, we did what we could with what we had to help them, but that put us in a position where then we had to trust God. But, you know, very shortly after that, somebody came to our house and guess what? They brought groceries. Yeah. Somebody that had the means to do it. The Lord touched them. All those things were added unto us because we were focusing on what God wanted us to do. Now listen to verse 34. He says, Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for tomorrow shall take thought for itself. <clears throat> For the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. God doesn't want you worrying about what's coming. He wants you focused on where you're at and what is. Focused on Jesus and the present. Learning to live by faith in the present prepares one for the challenges tomorrow may bring. Remember Noah? It was how he lived each day in that 100 to 120 years that led up to it that had him prepared when trouble came. If you will just learn to live with God where you're at today and trust him for what you need yes. now, yes. you'll be ready for whatever may come. Right. Remember, right. faith always focuses on the present. Sufficient of the day is evil there. Faith always stays focused on the present. Hebrews 11 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things 
not seen. Glory to God. Faith comes in hearing now. What are you hearing? What uh, Are you hearing the news or are you hearing the good news? The good news will build faith. The news will lie, mislead, and deceive you. And I'm not Donald Trump, but I agree with much of what he has to say about it. Yeah. We just read that report this morning that the CDC itself says that only half of those things, those deaths, <clears throat> the media is attributing to the coronavirus are accurate. Less than half as many deaths can be certified as having been the result of the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Amen. So faith is about now. May, you know, what, if, what if you'd say, well, Pastor, I've had opportunity to learn, but I haven't learned. Well, what are you doing now? Moving forward from here, what will you do now? Will you learn the word of God? Will you learn the word of faith? Because faith comes in hearing now. In Hebrews chapter 3, Jesus was warning believers. He was drawing a comparison between the church that was and, and between, <clears throat> you know, that now is, and, and Israel that was. He said down here in verse 7, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost said, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts in the provocation. How did they harden their hearts in the provocation? by disputing God's word and his will. Uh, in other words, they, they, would, they would hear God and then they would compare what God had said to them to the circumstance. And if the circumstance didn't agree with God, they'd take sides with the circumstance. Mm -hmm. That's how their heart was hardened. Yeah. You need to trust God in the face of the contrary. Yes. In, in, in what is it, Proverbs 3, 5 says, Trust the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean to your own understanding. God's not always reasonable. If he was reasonable, he probably wouldn't have died for us. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. But he did die for us because he loves us. So he said, Harden not your hearts as in the provocation of the day of temptation of the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years. Wherefore I was grieved with that generation. They do always err in their heart. They've not known my ways. Listen, there's never been a better time than now to learn his ways. How do we learn his ways? By getting into the word of God and not just hearing it, but learning to obey it. Well, well, pastor, I don't know how to act upon uh, the word of God. Ask God. He said, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. He gives to all men liberally and upbraideth not. Wisdom is the ability to do yes. what is right yes. in, in the right time. No Amen. Problem. No problem. And so ask the Lord for wisdom. Say, Father, I don't know how to be a doer of the word, but you do. So show me. I believe you're made wisdom to me, Jesus. And then do what the Lord shows you to do, whether it's through the reading of Scripture or by the leading of the Holy Spirit. Romans 8, 14 says, They that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And that applies to women as well. That word son over there is generic for humanity. Amen. And again, down in verse 15, we have this further affirmation. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. In other words, obey obey it's yeah. no no yeah. big complex issue do what god tells you to do <clears throat> amen yes glory to god and you you will never go wrong That's right. <laughs> amen. amen amen well it, it's almost time to close today but i just believe it's so important that we uh understand the importance of faith to us where we're at e you know, maybe it looks like we don't need to depend on God. There's never been a moment of a day yet that men didn't need to depend on God. Either either you're going to cultivate your own dependence upon the Lord and walk in the light of it, or you're going to remain dependent upon the world and circumstances within it. Yeah. And the result is you choose who your master will be. Will it be Jesus who loves you or the devil who hates you? Right. I hope it'll be Jesus who loves you. Listen to this very quickly. Luke chapter 17 and uh, verse 7. I'm sorry, Luke 18. These lights to to try to illuminate me, try to blind me too. I'm going to have to do like Dr. Summerall. I remember when we were at Rhema, Dr. Lester Summerall was ministering and he'd come in and they had these big studio lights because they were doing television production or tele television quality production and he'd wear his sunglasses. <laughs> Maybe I'll have to resort to sunglasses. I don't know. But in uh, Luke chapter 18 and verse 7 it says, Shall not God avenge his own elect which cry day and night unto him? <clears throat> Though he bear long with them, 
I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Isn't that sad that that question could even be asked? When he comes, will he find faith? Will his people have learned the lesson of their dependence upon him and cultivated the ability to trust him by hearing his word and acting upon it? Glory to God. Amen. Yeah. It's so important that we understand this. And what could possibly defeat them? Well, Luke chapter 21 says, concerning the end times, it says there shall be signs in the in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity and the sea and the waves roaring men's hearts failing them now when i i believe when it refers to men's hearts it's talking about the real man the spirit man men's hearts failing them for fear what you fear will be your master right. either you will develop a healthy fear of respect and love for god or you're going to find yourself naturally fearing those things that oppose god and his will for your life you choose you've got a choice it, it, it's not some cosmic lottery that chooses your destiny for you. It's your choice today if you'll hear his voice. Awesome. What happens? Faith will come. Yes. And if you'll act upon it, your heart will remain supple in the hands of God. And he'll lead you. He'll guide you. And, and he'll shelter you. Glory to God. Read Psalms 91. <clears throat> so it says, Men's hearts find them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on there. In other words, the more you focus on the world and its decline the more it's going to rob you of faith and instill within you fear. You choose. What will you focus upon? Religion leaves one consumed with needs, circumstance, and an awareness of those things, as well as threats. Faith remains focused on him that is faithful and true. Yes. Let me close with this. Re Revelation 19. I wanted to go so much further and share so much more today. Uh, mm. Revelation 19 verse 11 says, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness doth he judge and make war. In righteousness. God does everything right. You know, I, I, I shared this morning before this teaching, I was intending to share some other things and I didn't get to, but uh, have you ever been in a place where it seemed hard to reconcile the fact that God's word says he loves us? with the circumstance that we find ourselves in. Have you ever thought to yourself in a, in a, in a given challenge or in facing a, a challenging circumstance or situation or diagnosis, have you ever thought, well, well, if I were God, this is what I would do? Well, usually when we make that kind of statement, we're finding ourselves challenged to reconcile the fact that God loves us with a circumstance that's trying to challenge us. Yeah. And the truth is, God does love you. Yes. He does love you. Yeah. But but sometimes we don't understand the kind of hurdles that God has to jump to get to us. And, and oftentimes we're the ones that have created those very obstacles. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in uh, Psalms, the question is asked, uh, or, or really it's taught, to, it's declared of Israel that they limited the Holy One of Israel. Wow. How did they do that? By unbelief. Mm -hmm. By unbelief. They refused to receive all that God declared to be theirs. Amen. What will you do? What will you do? God loves you. He's committed to you. But we've got to go back as Hebrews admonished us earlier and learn his ways. Part of the hardening of Israel's heart uh, demonstrated that they, they, they didn't want to concede to God. They didn't want to learn his ways. They wanted God to do things their way. That's why many of them rejected Jesus when he walked among them. Because they had it set in their, their heads and in their hearts that God was going to do one thing. But their expectations weren't scriptural. Right. They were based upon their needs and their wants, not God's will. Yeah. They were looking for an event rather than looking to a Savior. Yes. And that's what a lot of people are doing today. There's Listen, the rapture isn't some kind of a, uh, you know excuse for for laying around and doing nothing because he's right. going to take us all anyway right. the result of an awareness of the rapture is to understand that time is short and we need to purify ourselves by walking in obedience yeah. amen and, and and appropriating what the blood has has bought us and, and we need to reach the world 
you know, my Bible tells me Jesus is waiting on one thing. It's yeah. the precious fruit of the earth. That's right. And, and so we need to focus on our walk with God and our effectiveness in reaching others. And, and we're going to talk about that more. How can we live in the present victory instead of dread uh, what tomorrow may bring? We'll get into that next week. We're going to go back. I promise you next week we're going to talk more about prayer and the supernatural and how you and I can appropriate and walk in what God has provided for us now in a way that it will prepare us for anything that may come. You know, when you know whose you are and what you have because of whose you are, (laughs) you won't worry about a thing. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us today. I just appreciate so much those of you that, that are part of this broadcast, whether you're watching it live with us now or at some later point and and i'm just trusting god to bless you we thank god for those of you that have continued to support this ministry we're in a process of taking care of some natural responsibilities here in jacksonville and 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 trying to get our home prepared we we want to and we've had another family graciously offer us the use of their home but we're wanting to start some some uh, meetings where folks can attend if they would like and we'd love for them to do so Uh, But we we are so appreciative of those that are praying for us and those that are continuing their financial support. And and if you've not been a part of that but would like to, you can can, uh, pay Palace your support to our email address, AbundantLove7 at BellSouth.net. Or you can just mail it to us at our office address, which is in the home now. It's 2548 Blackshire Road, B-L-A-C-K-S-H-I-R-E Road. Uh, Jacksonville, Florida, 32218. And listen, uh, you can trust God. You can believe God, and he will bless you so much more than what you've ever dreamed if you'll just learn to do so. That's what we're here to teach you is how you can learn to trust your Father because he's dependable, and he loves you. Amen. He has no ulterior motives, only his love for you. God bless you, and we'll see you next time, okay?